Let's go home. All ahead, full. Harris is looking for you, sir. That figures. Where have you been? I just got your message a half hour ago. You mean you just read it a half hour ago? I delivered it myself yesterday. Looks like you had a rough night, Mark. We're not scheduled to take over till tomorrow. What's going on? Come on, we're late. Sorry we're late. Turnover is complete. I'm ready to be relieved. As commander of the gold crew, I relieve you, sir. Stand relieved. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Gold crew, on deck, section one. All hands muster on stations. Fall out! Blue crew, fall out! How was your tour, huh? Piece of cake. You look awful. Don't you start. Anybody tell you why the change in schedule? Proceed immediately to electric boat in Groton, Connecticut, for retrofits. I hear we're getting new missiles. New birds? Why? Beats me. But Ernie Grado is back at electric boat waiting for us. You think you're in shape to take her there? Give me back, will you, Skipper? Well, maybe I'll go along for the ride. Make sure this poor excuse for a sailor doesn't wreck our little toy. With your permission, Captain. I would welcome your supervision of my uh, unfortunate executive officer. See you in Groton. Happy trails. Captain Harris. Yes? Would you be kind enough to come with me, sir? You don't have to drink your way out. I've just had a couple of bad weeks. I'm okay. Okay. Sometimes I wonder how Kevin puts up with you. Kevin strives for perfection. I make him look good by comparison. Besides, I get the job done. Including the job on yourself. Look, Mark, we've been friends for a long Lay time. Lay off, will you? I got the message. Sure, hope so. How are things with you and Cheryl? I keep proposing. She keeps refusing. All around lucky guy. Hang in there, champ. You'll get her one of these days. Let's get some coffee. After you, Captain. Not mine. I got the order right here. See? 
USS Montana, 100 gallons. Yeah? But I don't have it listed. Listen, all I'm supposed to do is deliver this stuff. What you're doing is your problem. Come on, Chief. Take the pain. I got five more jobs to do. All right. But I'm not putting it on my list. So who's looking? All right, you guys, move it. Call an ambulance. I think I broke my leg. Right away. Uh. Got a couple messages for you, Commander. One for you too, sir. Thanks, Ray. Your health? Problems? They're sending me to the medical center for a physical. I had one six months ago. Well, now, when you get to be your age, you got more good news. Uh, Ernie Graydell broke his leg. He won't be making the trip. I better get on top of that. See you later, Al. Yeah. Don't bring any flowers. second drink. Hooray for you. No welcome home, sailor. Home from the sea. You could have told me you were coming, huh? There was a change of plans. I almost missed the boat. <laughs> when are you sailing? I don't know, but look at this. You shouldn't have showed me this. I shouldn't do a lot of things. Well, you'd better not turn up at the Pentagon with booze on your breath, or you're not going to be sailing anywhere. Maybe that's a good idea. Stop it. Why do they want you in Washington? Have you talked to Kevin yet? I can't find Kevin. Al and I brought the ship up together. Kevin was supposed to be here. Al's in the hospital for a checkup. Just what a guy needs after a 70-day tour. Maybe, maybe they're going to promote me to Admiral. How would you like to marry an Admiral? Oh, Mark. Right. We weren't going to talk about that. Forbidden subject. Taboo. You've only had two drinks. You're drunk already. Do you know that? Cheap date. 
Would you like something to help you sleep, Captain? No, thanks. I would like to know why I have to stay here. The doctor wanted you to wait for the test results. I'm sure they'll release you in the morning. Then why am I confined to my room? I'm afraid you'll have to ask the doctor about that. Sorry I'm late. What's this all about, Kevin? Anybody clue you in? You look all right. Put this on. What's going on? You'll find out. Let's go. All you do is keep your mouth shut. Understand? Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? Yes, there is something else. You've been screwing up now for a year, Mark, ever since Maggie died. It was a tough break. And I've covered for you. But a year is long enough. You screw up now and you're finished. Do I make myself clear, mister? It's perfectly clear. And by misleading a trident crew to believing a war is on, giving them the order to fire four dummy missiles, then that'll convince me. Me and the president. But frankly, we don't have a choice. Mr. Pillsbury? I've been authorized by the secretary to give states approval. Presidents for it? States for it? I'm inclined to agree with them. Good. I'm glad to hear the Navy is wise enough to admit that a credibility problem exists in this one particular area. Bring in your men, Admiral. All right, Lieutenant. Gentlemen. Mr. Warden, the President's National Security Advisor. Mr. Pillsbury from the State Department. Admiral Hovard and Admiral Cullinane. Pleasure to see you again, sir. Kevin. Have a seat, fellas. We've uh, got a little surprise for you. Come on, Admiral. It's your show. These look like a couple of very capable boys. All of my officers are capable men, Mr. Ward. Otherwise, they don't command my ships. See you. Gentlemen, today, certain modifications on the Montana will begin. These modifications will start in the communications area. Remember what I told you. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. All the gear on the ship's classified. Relax, Commander. We've worked on more secret installations than you'll ever see. Yeah, this will do. We'll put the code generator and tape player in here. The output will feed directly into the communication center. You can't leave a trace. We ain't been caught yet. Watch it, will you? Don't worry. When we get finished, this whole wall will look brand new.
What do you see? Great. No arterial sclerosis. Ever have difficulty moving your fingers? Any pain in your hands? There's nothing wrong with me. Look, doctor, I went through this exam yesterday. Why am I being kept in isolation? I don't know, Captain. You seem pretty healthy to me. Maybe just some administration follow-up. It wouldn't be the first time it happened. I look into it. Meanwhile. Yeah, I know how it goes. <laughs> Hey, great party, Chief. It's a real blowout. Yeah. I hear Ray Olson's going to be chief of the boat, now that you're out of commission, just for this trip. I'll be back. Sure, Chief. You know, we're really going to miss you. Why don't you just take it easy? I'll do this. be gone the usual 70 days maybe uh, maybe when I get back you'll uh, change your mind oh, Mark, you don't need another wife especially since you can't forget your first one Low blows now. I didn't mean it that way I... why can't we ever talk about That's why you're taking the pills, the antidepressants, from an excess of happiness. She's striking. Who is she? She's just another entry in the Kevin Harris collection. He's been finding them since we were at the Naval Academy. Is that envious? What's the point? Kevin Harris, born all-American hero. Who could compete with that? Maggie used to go out with him, didn't she? Before you got married. A submarine, maybe. It's a small world. Everybody knew about that. Supposed to be long gone, Captain. I signed your release order this afternoon. Yeah? Well, nobody seems to know anything about it. Computer's probably down again. Get dressed. This time I'll walk you out the door. Come 
on in, Flo. What's the matter with the lights? What's wrong, Ernie? <laughs> Did you finish packing? Yeah. Did you remember your pills? Yeah. I packed my pills. You know why? You know why they call me Washington? We're going to go out and pretend that the war started. Yeah. Yeah, they rigged the Montana with some kind of tape player. It's going to take us through yellow, blue, and the red alerts. Right to launch. But it's just an exercise. Yeah. But the crew won't know that. It'll just be me, Kevin Harris, and some shrink that's coming along, a Commander Bryce. You know, they put Al in the hospital, just so he won't find out. Find out what? They put four dummy missiles aboard. Yeah, four dummy missiles, and we're going to launch them. And the crew won't know that it's not real. The whole thing is crazy. But what's the point? The point is we're supposed to prove to Washington that after the world's been destroyed, we're not going to give up. We're going to destroy some more. Just out of revenge. I don't understand. It's all in the tapes. The tapes are going to say that the Russians have dropped the bomb. And the crew is going to believe it. The crew is going to believe that their families have been killed. Their wives, their children, everybody. That's when the order to launch will come. And after we fire our four dummy missiles, then we'll tell the crew. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? You know something else? Captain Kevin Harris, commanding officer of the USS Montana's gold crew. He just loves the whole idea. I don't, I don't feel good. What's wrong? Me. I'm wrong. I'm not fit for a command. I don't know if I ever was. Seen her before? Hasn't changed her hair. I saw you and Cheryl at dinner. Neither one of you were looking too happy. Everything all right between you? That's personal. It is and it isn't. Anything that affects how you function aboard the Montana affects a lot of people, and that makes it my business. Cheryl and I are fine, sir. We get underway at daybreak. I want you to take the car. My pleasure, Captain. Let's go. I report my return aboard. Aye, aye, sir. Your ID, please, sir. Have you forgotten who I am already? Sorry, sir. Otters. Full crew on board, sir, and Commander Bryce. Very good, Chief. Sorry, Ernie Grado's not coming with us, sir. I'm sure you'll pick up the snipers. Count on it, Captain. Introduce yourself to Bryce. He'll be funky with you. Right. Let's hope he doesn't snore.
Dr. Bryce. Commander Van Meer. How'd you guess? Well, there doesn't seem to be anybody else in here. <laughs> and I thought it was all that psychological training. No, no, no. Up or down? Upper. Ever been on a Trident before? First time. First time. Did a dozen patrols on early Polaris. But that's about it. Well, they're not that much different. A little easier for the doctor. Yeah, that's yours. Oh, you're trying to tell me that this uh, duty's going to be a snap, huh? Well, we could arrange for an emergency appendectomy. Oh, ho, ho. You wouldn't do that to an old broken-down doctor, would you? The last thing I cut into is a nice big juicy steak. <laughs> In a real medical emergency, we would surface, radio for help, but I doubt if we'll be doing that on this trip. I think we'll discuss that later with uh, Captain Harris. Until then, I don't think we should talk or even allude to the drill. Once we're underway, I think the situation should be as real for us as it is for the rest of the crew, yes? I won't ask your opinion of Operation Fire. You're responsible for carrying it through. But I think I should tell you that not only did I not approve, I consider it extremely dangerous. Now, that's one of the reasons that I was chosen to be the observer. They knew I'd be a severe critic. What are your objections? There are only three people on board who know what's going on, who could stop the drill if anything went wrong. You and I and Captain Harris. And I don't count. Executive officer, lay up to the bridge. If anything happens to Captain Harris and myself, you better learn to count, Doctor. Have all departments make their getting underway reports to the bridge. Aye, sir. Pass the word. All departments make it getting underway reports to the bridge. Maneuvering reports answering all bells. Reactor is critical. All departments reported ready to get underway, sir. Stand by to get underway. Pass the word. Stand by to get underway. Comments, sir. Were you expecting any? I thought you might have something on your mind. I do. Captain's off the bridge. Captain's off the bridge. Mr. Spencer. Periscope depth high. Pressure in the boat. Close all vents. Make depth 400 feet. Down easy, Mr. Spencer. 400 feet high. 
Hold five degree down bubble. Five degree down bubble light. Two hundred feet, Commander. Very well. Four hundred feet, Commander. Zero bubble. Very well. Come right, zero nine zero. Right, zero nine zero. I. All ahead, standard. All ahead, standard. I. All ahead, standard. Maneuvering answers. All ahead, standard, sir. Very well. Yeah, we're four hundred feet. Coming to new course, zero nine zero. Making turns. Ten knots. Mr. Barry, you've got the car. Yes, sir. My cabin. Have the word passed to Dr. Bryce. Commander Bryce, Captain's quarters. Briefed by the Admiral, so I won't bother with details. If there are any questions, now's the time to ask them. This will be the one and only time we discuss the drill, for obvious reasons. When will the tape start? It's all pre programmed. All I know is that the entire exercise will take place in a 10 day period, during which we will maintain absolute radio silence, with the exception of a one a day. Ship status report that we'll send out by a fast transfer. What about incoming transmissions? Simulated from the onboard tapes. There's no way for the missile team to discover the dummy warheads? Not unless they physically open them. The computers have been uh, programmed to give the right responses to any panel check. During the 10 days while the crew gets programmed? What do you expect, Doctor? Prior to launch. Depression, anxiety, lots of anger. Beyond that, possibly some violence. From the crew? Against who? You, me, anyone. Oh, that's great. And then we tell them all it's just a joke. It's no joke. You better stop thinking it is, mister. Right now. So I think we've covered it all. Mark, will you stick around for a moment? As soon as this drill is over, I want you to request a transfer. Any particular reason? Simple. We don't get along. And there's no sense pretending that we do. I don't think you give a damn about the Navy. And frankly, I don't trust you anymore. Not as an officer, and certainly not aboard the Montana. Is that reason enough? I'll try and stay out of your way, Captain. You're excused. Captain, what do you think of this drill? What I think is none of your business. I don't make policy. I just carry it out. I follow orders the same way you do. When this drill is over, did it occur to you that Dr. Bryce's report on you and me will probably be as extensive as his report on the crew? Not that I much care about your career, mister. But I do care about mine. And that's all I care about. I can't check it. Montana left early, but these worksheets don't make any sense. It's as if there's a whole day missing. No, there's nothing on the schedule. Well, if it's a foul up, it's a beauty. Thanks. Come in. Sir, have you heard about Senior Chief Grado, the gold crew? Ernie Grado? Sure, he broke his leg. He tried to kill his wife, sir. He's been arrested for attempted murder. The whole thing at the base hospital. Dr. Norris, Doctor. please call.
This is Captain Renslow, Detective Fallon. Hi. Greater, what are you, man? He's on the gold crew. I'm commanding officer of the blue. What happened? Well, it seems Greater was working in this garage. About midnight, he called his wife out of the house and lit into her with a baseball bat. How is she? Cracked ribs, fractured left arm and leg, severe edema of the head and scalp. Police had no right to hold Greater for as long as he did. The man's behavior was obviously psychotic. He needed hospitalization. I don't know that it was obviously anything. We notified the base as soon as practicable. We like to cooperate with the Navy, but this was no drunken bar brawl. This attempted murder. Absolutely. Man has a broken leg. <laughs> didn't seem to slow him down, honey. Your department's got standing orders. Nobody can understand a word he was saying. By the time we got there, he was hiding up in his attic, stark naked and raving. Any reason why he flipped out? Well, we talked to the neighbors, but not much information there. Everybody said they were a terrific couple. You tell me. Can I see him? Sure. Dr. Tread, Thanks. you are wanted in the blood lab. He won't recognize you. It's not very coherent. This is if it's on some kind of drug. He's not the type. Besides, nobody gets tried in clearance without a heavy security check. Well, we'll run lab tests on it, but I can't even guess what's wrong with him. Sedated him. Doesn't knock him out, just quiets him. How much do you think he'll remember when he comes out of this? If he comes out of it, Captain. Can't even guess. Nobody's come by to see him? Bring him any clothes or anything? I rather doubt if anyone will. From what the police sergeant was saying, his wife was very well liked in the neighborhood. I'll stop by and pick up some things. How well did you know him, Captain? Well enough to know he could never do what he's done. They found her over there, just outside the garage. I'm Mrs. Padgett. I live next door. I'm Al Renslow. I figured the Navy would send someone sooner or later. Is Florence going to be all right? She'll live. How well did you know them? I told you I live next door. I still can't believe what he did to her. Do you know why, Mrs. Padgett? Why would Ernie do it? He went crazy. Florence was... She's a wonderful woman. Everybody loves her. It all started when Ernie broke his leg. How so? Oh, I don't know the detail. But I do know that Florence was worried. She said he was moody, working on that boat of his, the one he built in there. Well, that's why she had the party, try and cheer him up. And then look what happens. How was he moody? Well, he was always very friendly before, and then one day he just stopped talking. I just came to pick up some clothes, toothbrush, things like that for Ernie. Be easier if I did that for you, wouldn't it? I'm kind of looking after their house anyway. I'd appreciate that. What's the matter with this coffee? It tastes so oily. I got off, Bailey. Leave him alone. What? What's eating you, animal? Nothing. Just that he's right about the coffee. 
food, too. Doesn't taste right. Watch it, Long Street! Hey! Creep! Oh, that's liberty too much for you guys! Now quiet down! I saw the light on. And... Nice to see you. Come on in. You know, you look well. Mark said you were in the hospital. Don't remind me. The world's longest checkup. I didn't get out until after the Montana left. How was Mark doing? <sighs> oh, Mark's the same. The same as what? They're the same as always. That's not much of a recommendation. Are things okay between you two? Why don't you sit down? Things are rocky between us. You know, I love him, but I don't think he's ever going to get over his feelings for Maggie. Did you expect he would? I'll get her some coffee. Would you tell me about it? The accident? How did she die? You really want to know? Very much. I have to know, and you won't talk about it. Mark used to have a little single-engine plane, a puddle jumper. He taught Maggie how to fly. And they'd go up on weekends. And they crashed. Mark was thrown free, but Maggie wasn't. She burned to death. Oh, my God. What a nightmare. And he thinks it's his fault. Can I get you some coffee? Have you got any aspirin? In the medicine chest, in the bathroom. Shaking down. A little nervous. I don't know why. Maybe rumors. Rumors of what? Just rumors? Well, that seems vague enough. What do you mean by a little nervous? Dr. Bryce said there's been five cases of a rash, and there's been some complaints about the coffee. I read about the coffee. Tastes, uh, willy. Crew is nervous. This isn't going to help things. Bloody fighting in Egypt after a left wing attempt in coup. Libya offering support to the rebels. The self proclaimed revolutionary government repudiating all Egyptian Israeli treaties and calling for immediate state of war. Israeli troops massing on the Egyptian and Jordanian borders. Washington protests the sudden appearance of Cuban advisors in Jordan. Well done. Very believable. You're taking that calmly enough. I mean, it's, it's... It's a very good first message. What are you talking about? Do you know what can happen if the Mideast flares? This message is part of the drill. It's the first of a series. We've been briefed on them. Drill in, slip my mind. It's 
just that if anything really big did happen, a lot of things would get lost in the shuffle. There might not even be time to send us an override. Cancel me, sir. The message would be just like this. submarine crew member, somebody who might have been under some stress. Equivalent? Anybody who was a candidate for Equivalent wouldn't be allowed on a submarine at all. Really? I thought it was one of the minor tranquilizers. It sounds like it, but isn't. You know anybody who's taking it? No. What's so special about it? It's a drug for people suffering from severe cases of reactive depression. FDA just recently approved it as some controversy or side effects. Where did you hear about it? Oh, it just came up in conversation. Well, if you know someone who was on it, you know somebody with very serious problems. During a bad siege of depression, he could become suicidal. Might not hesitate to take other people with him. Captain, if you know someone who's taking Equiroil, someone on a submarine, you and I better have a very serious talk. Dr. Strickland, they need you right away. Excuse me. Well, just how accurate are all these data on the displays? Pretty close to real time. Satellite and radar tracking, as well as undersea sound detecting arrays. Reports from aircraft and surface units are slightly delayed. I don't think you've met Dr. Morelli, Mr. Warden. Dr. Morelli created the tapes that are installed on the Montana. A pleasure, sir. Your great insight has been of incalculable value to this most meaningful experiment. Thank you, sir. I just hope my work can fulfill your expectations. Let's have a look at a section of the Atlantic. Sure. Sector slash zero two six five slash three, please. Five seconds for recycling on screen left, sir. What are all those red cigar shapes? Soviet submarines. The blue ones are ours, the yellow, French, and so on. It's got a box around it. That means it's running on the surface. Is that all there is? Just that one picture? Full display, please. Does that answer your question, Mr. Warden? What are those white streaks? Satellite orbits. And the computers can predict the probable picture 30 minutes from now, or less reliably, even 48 hours into the future. Where's the Montana now? You're just outside this area. Just received from Montana, sir. Thanks, Bill. Something wrong? I don't know. The Montana's just instituted water rationing. Apparently, the evaporators are fouled. They're starting to clean them now. Two billion dollars worth of submarine and something doesn't work. Hi. Did you have a hard day at the office? It's after hours. It's loud. You didn't sound very happy when we talked. I'm not. A vodka tonic, please. It's about Mark, isn't it? It's about Mark and the Montana. I think you'd better explain that. Cheryl, did Mark ever talk about the responsibility that he carries? I mean, it's not as if this is a normal nine-to-five job. Mark is second in command of the Montana. That's a Trident submarine, all by itself. It's the equivalent of the third most powerful nation in the world. I know what Mark does. I mean, you don't have to quote facts and figures to me. What, you, you want an emotional response? And when Mark is on patrol, he's supposed to be at his peak, both mentally and physically and emotionally. What are you saying, that he isn't? You know he isn't. Mark's on Equiville. That's what they prescribe for people who are suffering severe reactive depression. You found that in my medicine cabinet. When I was looking for the aspirin. Well, why didn't you say something then? I didn't know what it was. Oh, but you found out. I thought you were a friend. 
I want to know how bad it is. What do you want me to say? That he acts crazy? He doesn't. Sometimes he drinks too much. The Equivil helps him sleep. I don't know what's in his head. What will the Navy do if they find out? Medically, I don't know. But his days in submarines would be over. And you're trying to decide whether you're going to do it to him or not? Let me tell you something. The submarine service means as much to him as it does to you. This concerns a lot more people than just Mark. His condition could be dangerous, not just to himself, but to the ship and the crew and maybe a lot of others. What are you saying? That he's going to go bonkers and blow up the world? Al! No, I don't think that. Although the Montana could do it. But when Mark comes back from patrol, he should go on leave. Pull himself together till he's off those pills. You want me to tell him? And if he refuses? You can report him. I'm afraid so. You tell him yourself. Do your own dirty work. Syrians are fighting with the Israelis. The Russians tell us not to interfere. In Libya? It doesn't look too good, does it, sir? <laughs> A flash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Russo, you got any nude pictures of your girlfriend? No way, man. I respect her too much. Well, you want to buy some? <laughs> You. I'll get you, you shut up! Knock it off! Both of you are confined to your bunk space in your working area until further notice. Me! He started it! I was the God's command. I've never been in a fight before in my life. Problem this time. It's important. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't. A fight broke out in the crew's birthing. Bruce on Long Street. Olsen and I broke it up. Good for you. What was the fight about? Well, it started with a joke. You know the old joke that goes, uh, do you have any nude pictures of your girlfriend? Pretty picture show. Did you see them? It was a joke. I won't have any porn pedal aboard this ship. Is that clear? The cruise morale is your problem. Don't you come crying to me about it. If you see something's wrong, you will go find out what it is, and you do something about it. Don't keep telling me you can't maintain discipline aboard this ship. things to worry about. Did you see the last message? Yes, but I know. I know the release code was not given to cancel this drill. But can you imagine what a madhouse Washington must be? They're too busy wondering about which ball is up. The big one or the little one to worry about us. We just get lost in the cracks. I remember they told us about those messages and this isn't one of them this one sounds real they're supposed to sound real it's part of the drill damn it mark that'll be all i don't want arguments about message traffic i don't want to be bothered with details of some small fight the cruise discipline is your problem you have
Something wrong? Rough day. Oh? You want to tell me about it? Long Street and Russo got into a fight. After Ray Olson and myself broke it up, Long Street began to cry like a kid. Crying seems unmanly to you. No, Doc. I don't think crying is unmanly. Then why did you react so strongly? It's out of character for Long Street. He's not that kind of man. I read his file. I read all the crew's files. Well, I guess you would have. Is the crew still coming down with that rash? Worse than that. Tachycardia. What? Rapid heartbeat. Sometimes a symptom of stress. Or drinking too much coffee. Caffeine can make the heart do double time. Crews always drink too much coffee. Not on this ship. Have you tasted it lately? It tastes worse than castor oil. <clears throat> it bothered me. You talked to Harris lately? We went over the sick bay roster together. Seem all right to you? He has the same thing about you. Harris thinks that Washington's canceled the drill. Doesn't surprise me. Not that war has broken out in Egypt. And my wife is going to open up this little gift shop next month. Now who knows if she'll have the chance. Yeah, I know what you mean. My sister and her family are visiting the in-laws in Idaho. If anything happens, at least they'll be safe. That's probably the worst place to be, animal. They got at least 50 silos in Idaho. It'll be the first state to catch it. Who told you? I read it someplace. You didn't have to tell me that, Dale, you know that? Maybe it's true. But you didn't have to tell me. You like to live dangerously, don't you, Daly? You guys don't understand how serious this is. Let's understand. We get the launch order, we launch, and that's it. The next day, we have a brave new world on our hands. You know what the problem is? Nobody realizes our destruction potential, or they wouldn't mess with us. It's not just nuclear. What do you mean? The Montana is a bomb. You dock us at a pier, you give the hull a sharp rap, and we can wipe out a city without the warheads. No, we don't have that kind of armament aboard. Just missiles. Leggett, what do you think makes those missiles fly? Each one has 12 tons of propellant with a binder that's almost all nitroglycerin. 24 missiles, 300 tons of nitro. Happy dreams. Thank you for coming, Captain. I hope I'm not wasting your time. What is it? Well, my son was playing. Oh, I know he shouldn't have been over here, but he went to the Grado's garage. He used to go in there and watch Ernie work in his boat. Sometimes Ernie would even ask him to help, and, well, you better see for yourself. In there. That's right, Lafayette Falls Pigment. Can you tell me where the company is located? Where? Lafayette Falls, where's that? Okay, thanks, I got it. I don't understand why. 
What does paint have to do with Mark? Ernie Grado was painting his boat when he went nuts. And if that paint was used on the Montana, inside the Montana with no fresh air supply, I'm not sure the filtration system can clean out those paint fumes. What are you saying, Al? You think Mark could go crazy? He's taking those pills. He's depressed, unstable. That makes him vulnerable. Do you realize what he could do on the Montana? They're going to be out there for 70 days. No, it's, um... It's what? It's not fair. What if he's fine and you report him? It's the end of his career. Or suppose there's nothing wrong with the paint. Suppose you're wrong. Maybe I am, but right now it's all we got to go on. Of course, if the elements in paint are incorrectly assembled, contrary to specifications, fluorocarbon-induced uh, psychosis is one of the possible side effects. But that kind of mistake, well, Captain, that isn't very likely. We work off the Navy manual. All of our product is tested and all quality controlled. I'm sure it is. But what can you tell me about this batch? Well, let's see. This is brand new, or close to it. Here it is. Special order for the Montana. Here's the invoice signed by, I can't make out the signature. Ernie Grado. What was special about the paint? It has a quick drying solvent added to the regular formula. Must be for touch up in small areas, uh, on a properly prepared surface, of course. Suppose it wasn't a small area, and suppose it wasn't properly prepared. Well, then it would make one hell of a mess, crack and bubble. Might even get a little toxic. It's possible. Not definite. No, not absolutely definite. How do you find out? We run animal tests. Come on, I'll show you. After we paint the inside of the box, we let it dry, put the animals in it for 24 hours. And if nothing happens to them, well, everything's all right. Nothing fancy about it. I want you to run a test on this right now. No problem. Only, like I said, it'll take a day to make sure there are no negative effects. We'll wait. all going to hit the fan now almost any moment. Elements of the 1st Marine Division have made contact with advanced units of the Soviet forces in Iran and have suffered more than 50% casualties. Libya has launched several tactical nuclear weapons at frontline Israeli troops. The Egyptians have launched a preemptive nuclear strike with a 25 kiloton missile that fell short of Tel Aviv and the Israeli nuclear counter-strike has completely destroyed Cairo. Oh my God. Main elements of the U.S. 6th Fleet are standing off Haifa to land troops and supplies. A large Soviet force is moving rapidly to intercept the operation. As of just before this meeting, the United States put its armed forces on yellow alert. Captain. Shut up! I haven't finished. Now, I, I guess we all pretty much know what to expect in the next day. Probably in the next few hours. Some of the crew members will be upset. I don't want to hear any morbid stories about what might happen or what's happening back home. The emphasis should be on the fact that we have a job to do. And any hope that we have in the future will depend on our willingness to do that job. And if worse comes to worse, we can at least make sure that the enemy will regret having started it. Now, Commander, did you have something to add? 
No, Captain, nothing. somewhere and I wish did you hear yellow alert it's the only good thing to be said about all this at least pretty soon it'll all be over what are you hiding in your hand bills what kind of bills Doc, there's not one man aboard this ship who's got a grip on reality anymore and Harris what about Captain Harris? Have you seen him? Have you looked at him? Are you going to stand there and tell me that Harris is acting normally? And you're the only sane person on board, is that it? Yeah. Now, that may sound crazy, but yeah. And I think these pills have something to do with it. treated for acute depression? Was. Ever since my, uh, ever since my wife died. Navy doctor prescribed Aquabill. No. A civilian doctor. And I don't know why, but I think there's something in those pills that's protecting me from whatever it is that's affecting this crew. You realize it's a very powerful drug. The side effects Doc, I need those pills. I really need those pills. You know the rules as well as I do. No unauthorized drugs on board, no matter what they're for or who they're for. Don't do this. This is just a drill. And everything has gone wrong when the launch order comes up on those tapes. Do you really think that Harris is going to fire just four dummy missiles? Doc, I need you. I need you to help me stop him. What do you want me to do? You're taking a powerful psycho chemical. You're telling me you're the only sane man on board? What does that sound like to you? Doesn't that sound just a little strange? It's the truth. I know you want to believe that. What are you going to do with my pills? Lock them up in the sick bay safe. Sorry, I have no other choice. Send a fast trans to Com Sutherland. Yellow alert acknowledged. Well, that's not standard, is it, sir? To acknowledge the yellow alert? Put it over my signature. What, sir? Put my name on it. Yes, sir. I'll get it out. I was nervous. I couldn't sleep. I don't know how you feel. Come on in. You want to tell me about it? Yes, Al. I've got to tell you something. Something I'm not supposed to know. Montana's been rigged with a tape machine to make it sound like the war started. They're going to launch four missiles. What? Not real ones. After they launch the fourth one, they'll tell the crew it's just an exercise. But until then, everybody is going to think it's the real thing. How many people know it's an exercise? Kevin Harris. Mark. The doctor, a psychiatrist. I don't remember his name. That's why you were in the hospital. So you wouldn't find out. What else did Mark tell you? That's all. Really. Hello. Something wrong with their nervous systems, I guess. Take a while to find out exactly what. 
What happens when you put two of them together? How do they react? I haven't tried that. Please repeat that, Bill. I want to see it again. I don't see anything unusual. I'm not sure I know what's upsetting you, Admiral. The yellow alert is programmed on the operation tapes. That's not a legitimate transmission, and Van Meer knows it. Well, the boy's just acting his part real well. No. It's not standard operating procedure. Alerts are not acknowledged unless requested. And even then, it would not be a personal message from the executive officer. Captain Graves, to the captain. Wait, what? Admiral, there's a Captain Renslow here to see you. He's got something urgent on Montana. Send him down. He's cleared. Thank you. On reflection, Admiral, if you truly feel that there's something to be concerned about, why don't you contact Captain Harris directly? I assume you have the facilities. Of course. But any direct transmission would make the whole drill suspect. Oh, yes, of course. That's uh, obvious. This better be important now. It is, sir. Captain Renslow, this is Caleb Warden, President's National Security Advisor. Captain Renslow is commanding officer of the Montana's Blue Crew. My pleasure, Captain. You have something to tell us about the Montana. Good news, I hope? No, sir. The Montana is in some danger, Admiral. Why so, Al? The paint that was used in her interior during retrofit. Paint? The Montana is an enclosed system. And a quick drying paint formula was used for some reason. It gives off toxic fumes which would be dangerous under any condition. Under the special circumstances of the drill. What do you know about the drill, Al? The crew has been primed to believe that World War III is starting. Only the captain, the exec, and the ship's doctor know that it's a drill. So much for Navy security, Admiral. This paint, sir, has just been tested on mice. They became psychotic within hours, and then they attacked each other without provocation. I don't believe there are any mice on board the Montana. Sir, before the mice were tested, Senior Chief Grado of the Montana suffered a chemically induced psychosis after exposure to the paint fumes. He then attacked his wife with a baseball bat and almost killed her. Do you have any samples of this paint? There's a gallon in Captain Peter's office. Lieutenant. Have that paint picked up and run through every lab analysis they can think of. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Chavez for Captain Peters. Thank you. How well do you know Harris and Van Meer, Al? We were at Annapolis together, sir. Van Meer is my best friend. Well, what would you say if I told you Commander Van Meer acknowledged a yellow alert and made it a personal? I'd say, sir, that either Commander Van Meer is now a dangerously unreliable officer, or that he's trying to tell you that the Montana is in serious trouble. And with everything else that's going on, I know it doesn't seem very important, but I figured you'd better see it for yourself. Right. You really think we're going to war, Commander? Think this is it, the big one? Are you asking my personal opinion? My opinion not as the executive officer of the Montana? I've always trusted your opinion, sir. I want to know what you think. My opinion, Ray. My personal opinion is no. I don't think this is the big one. I sure hope you're right, sir. In here. There, Commander. You see what I mean? Soviet Vector 3. 
One of their new submarines. She'll do about 40 knots. Charlie's name is a Zukov, sir. Full attack torpedo component. Or is this just another part of the drill, Commander? Was the Zukov ever mentioned on the tapes? No, Cam, there was nothing about the Zukov. Now will you admit that I'm right? That this drill has been cancelled. She's moving off. She'll be back. There's a thermal inversion to port. If we can get under it, we can deflect their sonar. No point in making it easy for them, is there? No, sir. I have the con. All ahead flank. All ahead flank, I. Maneuvering answers. All ahead flank, sir. Very well. Maximum down bubble, Mr. Spencer. 500 feet. Max down bubble, 500 feet, I, sir. Very well. We've already gone on blue alert. But that situation can change any moment without warning. Then they'll throw everything they have at us. And they'll throw it first. Now, theoretically, our satellites can detect their missiles in flight. That will give us 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour, to launch a retaliatory strike. But that's theoretical. It might not work out that way. Excuse me, Captain. What do you mean? That means if that happens, we'll have to pick our own time, fight our own war. We'll know what's happening by the messages that we get. If all transmission is cut off, or well, the messages are radically changed in character, we'll know what's happened. And we'll know how to respond. Lorenzo, this is Dr. Morelli. Seems you were right about that paint, Al. Probably right, Admiral. It takes more extensive testing. But there's some reason to believe that the drying agent in the paint is toxic. If so, chemical psychosis is quite possible. Of course, this man, Greto, was actually using the paint. So he was subjected to an intense exposure to the fuel. Is it possible enough to cancel the drill? I think that would be extreme. At least under the circumstances as we know them now. Thank you. I'll be glad to quote you later, Doctor. Now, hold on a minute. The whole purpose of this drill is to find out if the men will hold up under pressure, isn't it? Not under these circumstances. And unless someone can convince me to the contrary, I'm sending orders to the Montana, canceling Operation Fire. Do that, and you sacrifice your career, Admiral. This operation has cost a lot of money, a big pile of money, and there are too many decisions riding on its outcome. I agree with the Admiral, sir. Even the slightest possibility that something you might be You don't have a vote, Sonny. Neither do you, Mr. Warden. Lieutenant Chavez. Sir? Message to Montana on the Flashnet, personal to Captain Harris. Cancel Operation Fire and order them to return to New London immediately. Acknowledge and put my name on it. Here's one for you, Martin. What is it? Bourbon. Private stuff. It's against regs, Tony. So is the end of the world. Take it, pal. Enjoy it while you can. Find that. You want some? Booze is very perishable in wartime. So how are you feeling? I guess I feel like everyone else. The 
you ever think what it would be like to evacuate Manhattan? Is that where your family is, New York? Wife, kids. Four of them. You are going to drink that, aren't you? No. No, I don't think so. It tastes like the coffee. Hand it here. I'll give you my expert medical opinion. You're right. It does have a lousy aftertaste. Try something like this, huh, buddy? <laughs> no way we're gonna fall for that. <laughs> did, uh, did you acknowledge? Hell no. Maybe it's real. It looks real. Oh, don't be naive, Mark. They've been planning this one for decades. Their files on us are just as complete as our files on them. You don't think the Russians know how to fake these things? Take it from me, this one. is for keeps. There's no replay. Isn't going to be any negotiated peace. Winner takes all. The red alert hasn't come yet. Maybe we should wait. You know it's coming, don't you? Damn right it is. Somebody will make a preemptive strike. Now, we have our designated station, depending on the message received or not received from Washington. I propose that we move up to here. The Barents Sea. Just north of Novaya Zemlya. Perhaps the best launch station there is. It's not in our order, Captain. There aren't any orders, Mark. Don't you understand that? I'm trying, but... But what? You don't follow my orders, I'll put you in restraints. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Red alert. From red alert, sir. Contact there in 350. Put it on his speakers. Try the computer. Contact's gone, Captain. Gone! Was it there in the first place? What do you think you're listening for, man? Fish! Got lives depending on your ears. Now listen! Yes, sir. It was there. I swear it was. Contact. Can you get a signature? Still too far away, sir. She's going to follow us when we leave station. They're going to wonder where we're heading. We can shake her. I'm not so sure I want to. Is it as bad as I hear? Worse. Now the Zukov's under the inversion layer. We've lost track of her, too. What about your controls? Either they are no longer in effective command, or the paint has affected them as well as the others. They've already been told the drill was canceled and ordered back to port. I know, and they don't acknowledge you. Which means you have a submarine full of lunatics, Admiral. Excuse me. There may be one man who hasn't been affected. Commander Van Meer. 
When he acknowledged the yellow alert personally, he was trying to warn you. How do you know that? If the paint's as bad as it is, why wouldn't it make Van Meer crazy too? Because Van Meer has been taking Equivil. It's a very strong antidepressive. It certainly is. The side effects... The side effects may be what's keeping him sane. Doctor, is that possible? Yes, I suppose the drug could counteract the toxicity. But that's not my field. Well, you make that your field, Doctor, right now. Why haven't you told us about this Van Meer before? I think that's a very important issue, Captain. The only important issue right now, Mr. Warden, is the Montana. Thank you, sir. If Van Meer is sane, we may have a chance. Well, let's examine the facts. The Montana has refused to return to port or even to respond. I think we're all aware of that. And if she carries out her launch, she'll start World War III. And when we find her, if she refuses to return, what are our alternatives? That's right, gentlemen, there are no alternatives. What are you getting at? What I'm getting at, Admiral, is that we have no other choice but to sink the Montana. tape, isn't it? What do you think, Doc? What's your professional opinion? I don't know what I think. I keep trying to remember. Remember what, Doc? The messages, the alerts, they're all on the tape. It's just part of the drill. That's what you were trying to tell me before. That's right. Why didn't I know that? Why am I all right now? I put two Aquavel in the bourbon. But I locked the bottle up. I had some in my pocket. Really messed this up. How's the captain? Totally nuts. Crew? They really believe the whole world's about to go up in smoke. They've got to cancel. They already have. Harris thinks it's a trick. Doc, Harris has gone to war. The launch order is the only thing left on the tape. Launch the missiles? They wouldn't launch all of them? Oh, yes, they would. Then what do we do? We can't just sit here. We've got to... We've got to take over the ship. How? crew will never believe us in the condition they're in. We could try and slip some Equiville to Harris. It's not enough time for it to take effect. And there's only one thing for us to do. Find that tape player. Turn it off before the launch order comes through. Why didn't you do that before? That's the problem, Doc. Only Harris was told where it is. They're closing, sir. I should be able to get a signature soon. Let me know. I want to be sure. So to one-third, Mr. Spencer. One-third, aye, sir. All ahead, one-third. Maneuvering answering, all ahead, one-third. Very right, well. Contact bearing uh, 030, Captain. 2,500 yards. It's a Zukov. Get a fix. Plug into the fire control computer. Rage, speed, bearing. Angle on the bow. Call with torpedo room, no one in four. State is recommending we inform the Soviets. Put them in the picture. Tell the Russians that we've lost control of a Triton submarine and that it's about to start launching its missiles? That's crazy, Admiral. Somebody in Moscow sure as hell is going to start pushing the button first. We still have a chance to find Montana, don't we? A chance? She won't stay on station. What? Montana, sir. 
if Captain Harris believes the war has begun, really begun, and if he's convinced that a good part of the United States has been destroyed, he'll figure his own plan to maximize the Montana's retaliation strike. How do you know that? Because, Mr. Warden, because that's what I would do. I thought you were trained to follow orders from Washington, Renslow. You and Captain Harris. We are. But what if there are no orders, no Washington? Then he's on his own, and he would not stay on station. Neither would I. Where would you take the Montana, Al? To the best launch station I knew of, depending on the target. In this case, I'd head for the Barents Sea, north of Novaya Zemlya. Those Trident missiles have a capability of 6,000 miles. They can hit Moscow from where they are right now. It doesn't matter. A good captain would shorten the range to give the enemy less warning. And Kevin Harris is a damn good captain. That's what he's doing. We gotta outrun him. Evasive maneuvers? No, I'm gonna find out what he's trying to do. He wants to find out what you want to do. Just a game. He wants to play. Close in to 2,000 yards, sir. On a steady bearing. It's close enough. Why wait? What's the take over in the forward torpedo room? We're only going to have one chance. Now! Yes, sir. helicopter from Halsey has a submarine contact with a Trident signature. I've set up a communication circuit to monitor the ship and the aircraft. Thanks, Bill. Put it through the speakers, will you? Yes, sir. Monitoring number C7. Confirm Y2. It's the Montana. I've got a second contact in C6. Roger, we've got it. It's the Zukov. Great warrior, you copy that? Two signs. Roger. Tracking. Two signs. Coming fast. Number six is out. Bill, get this to the Chief of Naval Operations. What the hell does all that mean? Better call the President, Mr. Warden. Have him inform the Russians. Inform the Russians about what? He might want to inform them that the Montana just put a torpedo up the Zhukov's tail. Great warrior, white two. A Victor three has just surfaced. It looks like it needs help. Stay with it. Do not attempt a contact. Radio intercept reports a coded distress signal. A Soviet troller has just changed course for your position. ETA three hours. 
something on number seven. Growing fainter. Gone. Just faded away. But that was the Montana. I don't know where she is. feet down safe, but only for a while. The Zukov must have sent off a message. The Soviets will know our position. The Baron C is out. What's the alternative? Maybe something better. Back to station. They won't expect that. You don't approve? That um, sounds logical. Your approval is a big help, Mark. We're gonna go through a lot together. And we're gonna need each other's support. Well, what do you think so far, huh? We really free you, Captain. We're ready Let's for him again. Let's hit him launch, Captain. Come on. Come on. You wanna see me, Doctor? Something wrong, Commander? How long have you known me, Ray? Five or six years now. I was on the old Tecumseh when you were assigned as weapons officer. We came to the Montana together. You said you trusted my opinion. Yes, sir, I do. Have I ever lied to you? No, sir. I'm not lying now, Ray. There is no war about to break out. All the messages alerts. They've been fake. This is just a drill. It's called Operation Fire. I'm sorry, sir. I think you've gone around the bend. Ray, the commander is correct. This has been a drill. You've been a part of it. It's also gotten out of hand. We torpedoed the Zukov. That's no fake. No, no fake. That was real. But, Ray, it was a mistake. We can't afford to have any mistakes happen. No. Hey, listen, Commander, I want to believe you, God. I want to believe you. But you can't just ask me to trust you on something like this. You've got to prove it to me. It's your word against everything that happened so far. You could have cracked. You could have cracked under the pressure. I don't know. I'll prove it to you, Ray. Just as soon as I can. But in the meantime, can I trust you to keep your mouth shut? Nothing's going to change if I forget you said any of this. Is that all, sir? It's all, Ray. It's all. was a dead loss. Of all the men on this crew, Olsen was our best bet. Suppose he tells the captain. And you, Doc, are gonna lie up and down. That man is crazy. Have any more bright ideas? Are there any weapons on board? Any handguns? In the small arms locker, Harris has got the key. What are you trying to do, organize a mutiny? No. But if the launch order comes, and there's no other way... What are you talking about? One of us is going to have to kill Captain Harris. Come on, animal. Come on. Gotcha. Oh, 
try to stab me. I don't want to kill you. Come on, come on. Stop it. Animal. He tried to kill me. It's his life. Stop it. I took it from him. Get back to your stations. Animal, you're on restriction. I'm not going to live long enough to lose another strife, Commander. Neither are you as anybody else. Where's Daly going? I don't know, but you better find him. You better find him fast. Commander Van Meer to the control room. Commander Van Meer to the control room. What is it? Shh. Message coming through. Stand by to launch. No time sequence. Firing order may come through at any moment. Where the hell have you been? Daly tried to kill Animal. I broke it up. Daddy disappeared. Commander Rice is looking for him. They're supposed to be on their stations. Why weren't they there? I think the pressure got to them. Yes. All this waiting is a waste of time. We know it's coming. Now we have to get far enough away so that we can get these birds off without interference. I figure we can come up to firing death right about here. What do you think? Seems like the right place. It's not the right place. It's the perfect place. I have a surface contact, sir. Sounds like destroyers. Man in the pump room, Captain. He's got a flare pistol. It's daily, sir. Drag him out. It's your problem. How is he? I tried talking him up. It didn't work. Hi, right, you two men. Go down and bring Daly up. Tried that too. It didn't work for me either. Daly! Come on up! It's not that bad! You're not getting me up there! Well, sounds like he means it. What do you think you're doing? My job. Take it easy, take it easy. I'm not going. You don't want to shoot me. It's all right, I'm sitting on him. Get back to your stations. I'm gonna give him a shot, okay? You help me hoist him up. Take it easy, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Take it up to 200 feet, Mr. Spencer. Put us closer to launch depths. 200 feet, aye, sir. Three degree up bubble. Three degree up bubble, aye. Won't be long now. It's coming. I can feel it. Commander Bryce is dead, sir. Oh? Yes, sir. He and Commander Van Meer got daily out of the pump room. The doctor fell and broke his neck. I'll put Leggett in charge of sick bay. So what have we got up there? All clear, sir. No traffic anywhere. And there won't be either. Not here. There's something coming in on the voice circuit. Listen. You know, the Montana. Cancel operation fire. Cancel operation fire. Surface and report. Repeat. Surface and report. DNO to Montana. Cancel operation fire. Repeat. Cancel operation fire. Surface and report. Repeat. Surface and report. They're trying to compromise our frequencies. They're trying to cancel the orders to every ship in the fleet. It sounded real to me, sir. I beg your pardon, Captain, but it sounded like the real thing. You're right, Chief. They have a way of making everything sound so...
convincing. Most of you don't remember the Battle of the Bulge. Do you remember the Battle of the Bulge? Of course you don't. Battle of the Bulge of World War II. German soldiers dressed in American uniforms infiltrated the rear. It caused so much confusion they almost won the battle, maybe even the war. This is the modern version. This is the Battle of the Bulge brought up to date. <laughs> Remember, that was a voice message. You gonna fall for that? Are you? Are you? Hell no, you're not. We received official order to stand by the law, and gentlemen, that's exactly what we did. Yes, sir. It sure does. Chavez? Yes, sir. Priority call for you, Mr. Warden. Is this a secure line? Yes, sir. Caleb Warden, I don't have much faith in those probability positions, Admiral. Kevin Harris, mad or sane, is not going to be where those computers decide. Oh, why not? Given what we know about the torpedo and of the Zukov and figuring the Montana's probable speed, that area of ocean seems the most logical place to search. I know. That's why he won't be there. He's got a top sonar crew. He's got a good general knowledge of where our acoustic devices have been planted. And he's got a pretty good idea of what we must know. What are you saying now? There are certain areas of low probability, sir. Just south of where the Zhukov was hit. Harris knows there are low probability areas, too. And you think that's where he is? If I wanted a clear area for launching, sir, that's where I'd be. What you're really telling me is... We can't run a search operation from here. Somebody has to be on the scene, and you want to go, don't you? Desperately. But it's also the logical move. All right. You better get your gear together. There's an E-2C Hawkeye at Andrews fueling for a flight to the Halsey. I'll have a helicopter here in 30 minutes to get you over there. I'll ask the fleet commander to detach the Halsey and her support units. Thank you, sir. He'll be in charge. There's one thing you have to remember. Other people run the country, and they make the top decisions. I think you better spell that out. It means that if you locate the Montana, and she refuses to surface, you may receive an order that'll be very difficult for you, Al. An order to destroy the Montana. Yes, sir. I understand. Good luck. That was the Secretary of State. The Central Committee left Moscow in a body in the last hour. It's presumed they're heading for their main command post. Our satellites report unusual activity at Kapustinyar, Omsk, Turyatin, and other missile centers. The President has been informed by Moscow that they demand tangible evidence within 12 hours that the Montana has either been destroyed or surfaced. An ultimatum. They weren't very polite. Captain Harris put me in charge of the sick bay. That's what I'm doing here. I hadn't heard. Well, you heard it now. You want something? But Dr. Bryce was holding uh, my medicine. It's a personal prescription. It's, uh, it has my name on it. It's, it's in the safe. I can't help you, Commander. Well, the combination of the safe's right in the drawer there. 
Uh, Captain Harris said no drugs were to be given out. He didn't say you were any exception, sir. I'll, uh, I'll remind him of that. Yeah. You do that, Commander. Sorry about the doc. Yeah. Thank you, pardon, sir. It was a rough break. You know what you told me about before with the drill? What did you say it was called? Operation Fire. Yeah. Oh, that's what I thought. We came up to 200 feet. We got a voice message. I guess somebody lowered a transducer into the water to broadcast it. Say. Said it was from CNO. Said Operation Fire has been canceled. The captain says it's a trick that the enemy compromised our frequencies. What do you think, Ray? Oh, sorry. I don't know what to think. But if there's no war going on up there and we launch those missiles, we're sure as hell going to start one. Without the doc. I figured you could use some help. Not long now, Commander. No, not long. What's up? this operation. Any contact with the Montana? I'm afraid not. That weather front you came through is moving in on us. It'll be here in about six hours. I'll have to pull in the helicopters then. I want to see the six pattern from the air. Yes, I assumed you would. Your helicopter is over here. I'm giving you Lieutenant Epling. One of the best. Thanks, Captain. Make it good. Better. Ready when you are, sir. That's right now, Lieutenant. What are you carrying? Four agile rockets, sir. Heat seeking. Let's go. Man, 
Mr. Mark Van Meer. You've been accused of crimes against the Montana and her crew. And by extension against the United States of America. They include sabotage. Failing to carry out orders. Inciting to mutiny. And indirectly causing the death of Chief Raymond Olson. Furthermore, this court will seek to prove that you are as suspected. A Soviet agent. Hang on. How do you plead, Mr. Van Meer? Not guilty. We damn well know you're guilty! We don't need to prove it! No! no. I haven't been assigned counsel. I... I have the right to counsel. You forfeited your right to counsel! Mr. Van Meer. And I want to speak for myself. Oh. oh. <laughs> what would you have to say? Now go ahead. You've got the deck. There's no war. It's all been a drill. Psychological test. See how you'd react to war. It's all been programmed. The alerts. Stand by. It's all on tape. There's a tape player hidden somewhere aboard this ship. And when the order to launch comes, it'll be on tape too. And if we launch our missiles, it'll be a real war. Who knew about this so-called drill? You. Myself. Dr. Bryce knew. Dr. Bryce is dead. That leaves you and me. And I'm here to tell you that you're a liar. It's coming in, Captain. The launch order's coming in. Come on, Mr. Van Meer. I'm going to need you one more time.
This is your trap. Man battle stations missile. Man battle stations missile. Man battle stations missile. Proceed to status 2SQ. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. Weapons officer, officer, the system is armed. Here it is, Captain. Launch missiles. Launch missiles. Launch steps, Mr. Spencer. Launch step, aye, sir. Five degree up bubble. Five degree up bubble, aye. Take the traitor below, animal. Condition 1SQ. Set condition 1SQ. Firing circuit is energized. Prepare to fire. All compartments hold on count. Die marker, launch one. But that'll give away our position. Launch one! Do it now! Zoom countdown. Firing order now. Direction is completed on firing order one. On the count of three, I'm going to kill you. Only a drill. Three, it's too two, late. One. Fire. Missile one away. Missile one away. in on us in 15 minutes. That's all the time any of us have to live.
next missile is real. Real. It's not too late to stop it.
the hell are you doing? Get up the damn ladder! You first, Commander! Crazy? No! Are you?